the Opie and Anthony program. Hi. How are you? Being joined right now. Hi. Of course, uh, Jimmy Norton. Hi. Per usual. I think Opie's uh, in the can. Yeah, dropping a nagel. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <just laughs> oh, boy, does he not oh, like he that. Like not even all. a hint of a smile when you refer hey. to uh, feces as a nagel. <laughs> he does not like it. Sorry, I didn't know that. Who thought that up, guys? Was that uh, Sam? It was. I, I knew it was Sam. Sam is very cherubish, very adorable, yeah. but he is one of the biggest uh, a-holes on the entire program. He's just a nasty, you're a nasty kid. He was a nice kid. You guys made him go intern with Scorch. What do you expect? Yeah, that might have done it. Colin Quinn joining us here also. Welcome, Colin. Hi, always guys. Good to, always good to have you on board. Colin! Like it's a ship. I've been listening on to, board. I've been listening to the show. It's great to be here on Aces Up with Lefty Rosenthal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a shame if the county commissioner wants to come on and debate me. That's <laughs> <laughs> better drop it now. Hold on. Uh, I just dropped an extra Some employee. people the, uh, can do something. <laughs> the, uh, you and know get away what? with it, and others can't. It's hypocrisy, such as life. Right. My first guest is Frankie Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, you're going to be at uh, what? Caroline's? Car- I'm going to be at Caroline's Comedy Hour on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> no Thursday show. No, why you had a Thursday show? No, I wanted to know why you didn't. I'm sure people did you have one? Come on, yes, yes Jimmy did. That's I didn't what he was, have one. That's what he was getting at. It's a, of course. This is oh, this is, is that what he's doing yes. even to me? No, yes. I was actually probably implying that you, oh. when you only do the weekend, that's more a sign of being famous than when you do the full week. The, the celebrities come in and just do Friday, Saturday. They don't do Thursday Ooh. through Sunday. Like oh, night. is that how it works? I like how you just spoke. No, instead, instead, I like, instead I like of that he said nice. that, but, but the truth true. of the matter is, in some clubs, that's true on the road, but in Caroline's, I think it's a sign of uh, a decline and fall of a great man. <laughs> <laughs> you know... They, they the don't want their seats full. Come on and debate any time. I'm here. <laughs> the county commissioner. <laughs> the county commissioner. And just now, to, uh, I was waiting for you guys. I was, they, for some reason, out of nowhere, there was a commercial yeah. for the movie of a Bronx tale. And all I could think of was Baines. Baines? Baines? <laughs> hey, wait, you know what we ought to do? We ought to get the real audio from the movie of Beans. Oh, God, and compare it. Oh, we haven't. Why no, are we definitely. And then have Chaz come in and go, and are you, is he dodging you? <laughs> <laughs> he's dodging me. He's only Louis 20 Beans. Bucks, and he's Lu- dodging me. You know Louis Beans. You're right. You're, right. You're always right. He could be reading off a menu. Oh, yeah, he's I watched horrible. it on YouTube, and it was really great. Yeah. It's so. Bad. Oh, that's right. There's a video of that, right? Yeah. yeah. We videotaped that. Is we videotaped everything. There. I was on YouTube. All right. We'll have to check yeah. that out. I, wa- I, I got to hear this that up part. up and comer named you, Big A. You want to hear it again? <laughs> <laughs> this up and comer. A young up and comer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, do the big setup there, Anthony, for this. We'll play it again. It's called the Bronkish Tale. A Bronkish Tale. Well, uh, for a couple, look at that. What a coincidence on uh, CW11, Chaz Palmentary oh, well, walking on. Hey, hey, Chaz. Uh, well, we had Chaz Palmentary coming in. Uh, so we wanted to do something a little different with him from the first time. So we figured uh, we would set Rich Voss up. Uh, we told him we had a script because he's always talking about his acting, Rich Voss. We had a script that we wanted him to read with Jim Norton uh, from A Bronx Tale and uh, and just show off his acting prowess. At the last minute, we uh, inform him, no, it's not going to be with Jim Norton. It's going to be with Chaz Palminteri, the guy that wrote the movie, uh, wrote the story, acted in the movie, uh, and, and he was... Was so flustered. Well, his, he was nervous. Let me explain one thing, though, Anthony. Yes, sir. that was the exact opposite of the way the story went down. You're on the show. I watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. He didn't inform him. He stood there, and Chaz came out next to him. Yeah, well, that was how he was. Informed. Well, that's how he was informed. Yeah, Chaz walked out, <laughs> and he was so sorry, nervous. I... informed by his actions. Well, I forgot. <laughs> yes, what, what who? Was... It's the uh, um. How about last time I was on, and he was doing Bobby. Dice as Bobby Kelly is one of the funniest things in the history of the world. <laughs> dude, I broke my knee, dude. Ouch. So I'm playing uh, Call of Duty 4 with Dane. Me and Dane. Dude. Dude. Oh. Hey, Jimmy feeds snot to my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Andrew uh, Dice Kelly. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 
So let's play this uh, a bronchish tale. Yeah, so he acted with him, and... Uh, and this is what we got. Here's what we got. Why haven't we gotten the, the, the uh, original <laughs> scene yet? We should get the scene. Oh, get that for tomorrow, Steve. Oh. You can't get the property rights. Oh, you're right. <laughs> the original scene so we could compare. Oh, God, that would be a great comparison. Absolutely. Here we go. A bronchish tale. Oh, <laughs> Robert De Niro. It's not what you say, it's what he sees. In his directorial debut. We can't accept that. Starring Chaz Palminteri. <laughs> I didn't give it to you, I gave it to son. And Rich Voss. Louis, fiends, I want my money. A bronch. <laughs> You can't dodge me forever. Come on, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about huh? John, I got a problem with this guy over here. Louis Beans, this guy owes me 20, and it's been two weeks now, and every time he sees me, he keeps dodging me, John. Should I crack him one or what? The struggle of an idiotic Jewish comedian stammering his way through a few lines of film dialogue with a genuine Hollywood actor. Listen, see, sometimes violence is not the answer. Is he a good friend of yours or not? Nah, John, I don't even like him. Well, there's your answer right there. Look at it this way. It costs you twenty dollars to get rid of him. He's never going to ask you for money again. He's never going to bother you again. He's out of your life for twenty dollars. Come on, you got him cheap. Yeah, you're right, John. You're always right. A Bronx <laughs> tale. <laughs> How do you know the right answer all the time, Johnny? Well, I try to keep my eyes and ears open all the time, and I read. You read? Yeah, I read. Come on, come on. Let's go to Mario's next door and get something. <laughs> The only, oh, the only line that sounded real is when, when Voss shockingly goes, you read. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? And if it was real life, he would have said, how do you do that? <laughs> Louis Beans. It reminds me of his act with the daughters. The original script was Johnny, and they used to change it to Sonny. Yeah. yeah. Oh. His, his first line in that bit there is classic. Well, can't you guys bring him in for a lot of actors for movies? I <sighs> believe it. Well, now it's got to be the new bit. we got to set, the, yeah. set up oh, uh, the yeah. sequel. The sequel. Yeah, the sequel. Yeah. Because he was nervous when he thought it was me and him doing a scene. He was in the bathroom. Yeah. He really wanted to show his chops. <laughs> he really is. He's horrible. We had, a, we had a lot of the boys in that day. He was going to show off for all of us. Yeah. Oh, and then really? Jazz walks in. Because Bobby any Patrice. time we notice uh -oh. when we're doing a show on, his, on, on Tough Crowd, any time we do a little scene, even his daughters and him did the scene once, he goes into a shame spiral and just starts like, <laughs> his, <laughs> his face turns red and he just starts going, ah, and starts, oh. He, no confidence. None. And he shouldn't have any. All his self-esteem just comes out. <laughs> I have a movie I did with him. It was a bad film, and we had footage of Voss at, like, doing, like, like cutaways, like, when he was looking shocked to the camera. <laughs> it's, it's, I've never seen, I've never seen, like, worse acting, even in real life, in a movie, <laughs> yeah. in a play. Just anyone acting out anything. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, he's, Can't still, be gunning. As bad he's as still gunning for Keith over that incident at you guys' pilot. Oh, really? A oh, pilot the we haven't heard uh, about since we did it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what does that mean, guys? <laughs> I think oh, from what I, I heard know. from that scene in particular, it was the only part of the pilot I heard where you blindfolded two 90-year-old men and made them kick each other. <laughs> yeah. I think they're sending it over to A&E. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that pilot. Uh, hey, um, we soon to see Amelia Earhart. <laughs> we teased the... Uh, uh, pilot joke, nothing? Pilot. Yeah, I like it. Oh, <laughs> We teased a uh, a home invasion story, Anthony. Yes, oh and God. I'm glad Colin's into it. You know how petrified maybe, I am of the home invasion. But maybe he could talk some sense into you. I don't need I sense. Don't, last time I was in, I remember he was saying he walks around the gun on his waist. Uh, uh, he's, yeah. bought, he's bought two more guns since then. He's got four handguns. I like guns. Four handguns now. I like, I like guns. guns. He already has his eye on a fifth. I I, I hear. I, I like might guns. pick so up a Desert Eagle just for that, fun. Uh, yeah, huh? like Desert Eagle's a nice gun. Yeah. Well, if you have, go ahead. So what happened? He well. That's what happened with him. I, I mean, I walk around, uh, yeah, uh, and people laugh at me. They go, "Well, what do you need to walk around?" So well, it's the very problem comfortable. is, yeah, I know, but the problem is, you're like falling into that category of any guy from your neck of the woods, as we know, my cousins are from out there. That gets a few dollars immediately, they go into you know that crisis. You know, instead of having like an existential crisis where they like try to go to that, you just buy more guns. <laughs> And somehow project outward the inner pain. You know what I'm saying? I'm not Dr. Phil. It can't just be that I enjoy shooting different types That's, of guns. I go yes, to the range. I love guns. I'm I, talking about walking around fully strapped in your house. It's not you fully strapped. I'm not wearing a bandolier full of like <laughs> like a bandito. But you told uh, me you never walk around even in your underwear. You said you wear BVDs with a full. <laughs> well, I don't think I've ever talked about walking around in underwear. I. But, you know, I like it's it's comfortable. It almost you have your wallet in your back pocket, right? Right. Well, this feels like another just accessory that I you have that you carry with you. 
Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, even in, in, in your house, like you can probably get a lot of alarms and stuff, right? But your house is, that's where the home invasions happen. I understand, and but yes, you have a little pre-alarm system? So I have an alarm the, system, but let, let's I be totally honest. I totally agree with carrying the gun, having the gun handy. The gun being around, I've read stories of home invasions where then uh, the guy uh, couldn't get to his gun. Well, even the BTK killer. I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, the woman uh, the cocked the gun killer? and... Uh, no, that was the rich... Oh, that was, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. BTK yeah. killer, he walked oh, in, the guy was a boxer. Horrid. The guy was a boxer, and this guy kicked in his door, and and the family, but he thought it was like a setup, and that was the beginning of the BTK. He thought they were joking. He's with, they were the family, middle of the yeah, end. It's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoops. So you're right to have the guns handy, but I'm just saying having them on you is probably more handy if you could just be like, oh, my God. Blah, blah. No, how about just Talk have one on you, and and it's, a, like I yeah, said, like your yeah, wallet. Fine, you look. just have it on you. All right, I it's agree. nice, yeah. a small little uh, well, thing. Fits right there under Talking your shirt. About Sig Sauer, maybe a three A. Oh, I got, I got the Sig. I got the Sig forty five. Nice. Well, Things wonderful. An HK forty, and uh, just picked up uh, a Walther a nine millimeter. Do you know oh, not, one per- the- yeah. not, not one person? Not one person I've told that to has said that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> not one person has not, said. Not, not, but I do it. understand. Not one good for you or good for him. Not good for you. Like not one good for him. Well, you know what we say: better to be judged by twelve than carried by six. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, um, so when the home invasion stories come up, I, I try to help Anthony out a yeah. little bit. Well, yeah, because a lot right of people think he's a bit paranoid. But then you got these stories in the news every day. But this home invader, I don't think you could uh, do anything about. No, no I think this one would get you. Oh boy. Here's the story. And in Florida, a woman finds a surprise in her kitchen. An eight-foot-long alligator. <laughs> <Deputy> <laughs> oh! <laughs> an alligator? Yeah. It's a, wow, that would suck. Alligators are doing home invasions now in Florida. <laughs> That's what they're doing? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. How would you Ooh, defend that would against be... that? Well, I probably wouldn't shoot them. Well, because you hear, I think you, what would happen, you would hear a noise. Someone obviously broke into your house, and you're looking around for for this. Uh, this. Oh, you're looking at, like, yeah, you're eye looking, level. Yeah, eye level, and all of a sudden, the, the croc takes your, your leg off. Bites your foot off. Takes your foot. Oh, wow. How do you defend against that? And then you got the pain, and now, now you can't really focus with the gun. That's tough. You're in deep trouble. You know what, though? Uh, he'd have to come up my stairs. I See, my game who, plan is right. to be upstairs, but you don't, high You're ground. not really fully committed to it. Because no. if you're really fully committed to it, what you would do is have, like, one time I saw this movie. Scunners. That had a bunch of different mirrors. And every time the guy shot, he thought it was you, but it was really the mirror. Oh, so I need to put, put mirrors on face. every wall. No, put, like, fake entrances. And then when the guy comes in, you shoot him, you know? <laughs> I like the idea. Believe me. I have a, ga- I have a game plan. You know, I have a, a, a I game it. plan in the house. Yeah. Look, old jokes aside, I agree with you. I think that so more people should be murdered. And what bothers me about the anti-gun people is they never mention, and this is a big part of it, how many people die, how many people don't get killed and don't get raped because they had a gun and shot Well, them when you're a card-carrying member of the National Rifle Association like I am, you get a magazine every month. And they give you and, the stats? And they, they, oh, they have do. stories. Yeah. They have stories of uh, armed citizens and how they um, uh, avoided getting killed. During the commission of crimes, using their guns in their homes, because you know the news never You're right, uh, but it, prints that. But Obi's got a good point. Why can't they give you the stats, which would help them? No, they just have crazy stories out of detective magazines. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I was almost killed and buried alive till I used my Walter B. Yeah, it was great. It was. But the stats would help in the long. It run. really would. Let's get the rest of the story on. Huh? Foot long alligator. Deputies say sixty-nine. There is no more to the story. Frosty <laughs> called nine one one after finding the two hundred pound reptile. A trapper came to remove the gator, and right. the animal was cut when a plate <laughs> fell to the ground during the chaos. No one else was hurt. Aww. Deputies say that Gator pushed through a screen door before oh. making its way through the living room, down Pretended the hall. Pretended he was selling encyclopedias, <laughs> and the woman opened the door. And yeah, he I guess so. <laughs> and he bit her ankles. <laughs> <laughs> encyclopedias. Yeah, I'll tell you, he'd make a. F- what, that's the that, that's the one part of that joke you found a fault with. <laughs> <laughs> My pronunciation. <laughs> shame, 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 ah well. Shame on you. What about Joseph Callinger? Remember him in the 60s? He used to work around his son, and he'd go door to door, and he'd like be fixing things. And him and his son, he'd like, kill people, and then he caught off one of his son's penis and put it in a jar, and they'd rape and kill people. It was in uh, suburban Philly. Wait, wow. The Shoemaker. The Shoemaker. The Shoemaker. No. I never heard of him. Him and his son together? Joe Callinger. Yeah. And the other son, he didn't like. He fell into disfavor. He cut his penis on and put it in a jar. Oh. Did they ever make up after that? Joe Callinger. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, Dad, go. come here. I, I, look, I owe you an apology. You'll never go for what? <laughs> you know exactly what it's for. Hey, uh, switching gears slightly here. Well, 
Mm. More than slightly. We have a priest that uh, went bye-bye. He disappeared. Yeah, this is such an odd little story. (laughs) (laughs) Have you heard this one yet? No. Oh, my God. Listen to this. This is Reverend Adelir Antonio de Carli just moments before he set out on an ambitious journey to fly 465 miles using small helium-filled party balloons. The Brazilian priest was looking to break the record for most hours flying balloons. He was hoping to raise money for a spiritual rest stop for truckers. Now, more than a day later, rescue workers are... Tr- a spiritual, a spiritual rest, rest stop for rest truckers? This story has so many things in it. You know, wait, wait, what? Yeah. Where, where did huh? it It's a glory hole where you can also receive... <laughs> you're back jimmy you're back oh, uh, chicago's gonna love you this weekend oh god that's a great line that's a great line cool rest stop for truckers <laughs> now more than a day later rescue workers are trying to figure out where he is Port authorities say the last time they heard from him, he was calling to get help using a GPS device that was tracking his coordinates. Fire department officials say they're focusing their search on the southern coast of Brazil. Winds apparently had pushed De Carli about 31 miles off the coast when he last made contact. Pieces of his balloons were also found here. The well. treasurer says she's confident the priest will be found alive. In addition to being an experienced skydiver, she says he also had a floatable seat and a parachute with him what a yeah, specter uh gadget these guys go like 18 <laughs> to twenty thousand feet in a chair right lifted by balloons i've seen those videos they're those are insane years ago the guy got down because when he wanted to go down he had a bb gun he just started shooting balloons until they took him yeah down. yeah that's crazy so that yeah. is the priest kind of disappeared is that what he was in i thought he was in like a regular hot I, air balloon i think he was in a regular hot air balloon but he had uh, these other gadgets it looks like he had a, a shoot to, the, to do a little skydiving what do you know danny uh, it was not a regular balloon. Much he, more, right? Yeah, he was using like like that stereotypical you know kid floating away on a bunch of carnival balloons. Oh, like uh, a lawn chair, yeah, like the lawn like, chair it video. Like something out of MythBusters, and it, it was no <laughs> basket. It was just pretty much exactly what you said, like a chair with like a harness on it. Oh my! God. And that's all he was using. He's I, so dead. But I don't know minute, about that. He's a skydiver, so he might have been, yeah. jumped out. Yeah. Just the fact that we're discussing this is asinine, but <laughs> also, don't you think the minute they go like some other country besides America, it was like, oh, who knows how they do stuff there? It's retarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to go back to guns for a second. We got Ray guns. from Westchester. Uh, guns. A lovely lady. Ray, what's up? Hi, I was just, I was just wondering if Anthony is going to get an underwater assault rifle to keep in his pool. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How that, much do you love her, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a tough one. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do when the pool goes in. Uh, she when just I'm told in the what pool. to do. Underwater assault <laughs> rifle, like the SEAL teams use. Yes. <laughs> or at least a harpoon, like a, a harpoon gun. Oh, oh, like a spear gun. Yes. Excuse okay. me. Okay. Yeah, good. Good. These make, are all good, good well, that, suggestions. That makes cleanup a lot easier because you can yeah. like, pull Not the... To, the not, person out of your pool. That's true. Not to profile, but you rotting. don't need to protect yourself in your pool. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's think, true. <laughs> Two places swimming. to save, the pool and the library. <laughs> not known for swimming prowess. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, we have to take a break. Colin uh, Williams here playing Caroline's uh, starting Friday. Friday, Saturday, my Sunday. My skit is on free. Yeah, I guess I'm not on Thursday like this phony over here. 212-757-4100. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing you're doing two Friday, two Saturday, and one Saturday. I like that right. jaded, but I'm still a pro and going to give the number. Shut I have up. to. I want people to come Shush. to see you. I what also... They didn't run your Good Morning America, you phony. I know they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. They never ran it. <laughs> I heard they were getting B-roll oh, for the, really? the piece. I know, but That's I, I was yesterday. already there, so yeah, why would I there. do that? Yeah, he was promoing Carol. Uh, I think I saw him for, for last week. Oh! They, what Oops. is Steve talking? Somebody said yesterday they were looking for B-roll. He, but they already did the Carolines. I don't know why they did I guess they didn't like know. the piece. But well, maybe they're looking forward to your next performance there. I guess Let's tell you something, because the Carolines, what a great place. And they they treat us so well over there. I want to thank them. And the food is really good. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It was great. You got uh, Greg Charles to thank. Yeah. He's in the office. He looks like uh, a young Malcolm you, McDowell. Huh? With his hat and his hair <laughs> and the shape of his nose. He looks like uh, Malcolm McDowell clockwork orange face, except he has facial hair. Really? Yep, that's who I, Greg looks like. I, I have a feeling he's a raging alcoholic, too. You think so? <laughs> Why? What do we know on that? I don't know. Every time I see him. What, what do we know on that? <laughs> <laughs> what do we Get me some him? info. <laughs> right. I need some intel. <laughs> <laughs> Ace is high with lefty. Unbelievable. <laughs> Such is life. What's wrong with Colin? Hey, when we get back, uh, maybe your take on the whole Hillary thing. I don't know. Maybe Ooh, I'd love to. Why not? And and uh, we got audio because we, you know, you were coming in today. We have to take care of Colin. We have brand new scorch audio for you. 
It's always, you know. You want to know what oh, we got? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is you guys being upstage by some of his topical. <laughs> well, this is what we got for, for the people out there. Scorch's top names for Food Network shows. I thought we did that last time. <laughs> it's all the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> You're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. Colin Quinn in studio today playing Caroline's here in New York City. 212-757-4100. There's a lot going on today. Uh, there was something else I did want to talk about before we get into the Scorch audio. And also we got uh, the original scene from A Bronx oh, Tale. Oh, We got the original scene <laughs> from A Bronx Tale. Um, I finally uh, took care of my my picking problem. I don't yeah. think I brought this up in the air that that much, but the guys around here uh, completely fed up. I, matter of fact, two days ago, <laughs> Anthony walked in just before the show started when we were jamming to Rush, and he was in yeah. a bad mood, even though he says he, he wasn't. It was for two seconds. Yeah. Hold on a minute. And Opie has a thing on his right hand, kind of like uh, on the fatty area between the thumb and pointer finger. <laughs> Forefinger. That looks. It was a something that was a cut that became a scar. Oh, I just want to thank Keith the cop. Your your real friends come out of the woodwork in the time of need. Oh, what were you saying? I was just reading a text. I was just explaining that uh, where your little cut was that you started to pick at. Right on on your hand. Well, I'll tell you when it started. I I, I banged my hand getting up for the the show. You know the deal, Ant, Jim. I bang my hand uh, quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you that got, you got that, that little moment of silence had me a little flustered. <laughs> That's a close call. <laughs> I knocked over a fan this morning getting ready for the show. Every because you're just walking around the dark, confused he in like there? a zombie. <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just really standing there. Yeah. You're accessible. <laughs> so, what was the movie? That came out with uh, this. This helps the story. This is where it'll get people to open their mouths wide and look at the radio. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn, that dumb comedy. What was uh, it called? Oh, the breakup. I'm gay if I watch this. <laughs> well, <laughs> well then, uh, guilty as charged. <laughs> All right. Uh, me and my girl went, saw the movie. Whatever, it was okay. It killed a couple hours. It was no big deal. Yeah. Then we went and uh, had sushi, and and I had a little scab. Sushi. I remember where the. The, the day this began, I had a little scab and went pick and just picked it off my hand. Mm -hmm. How long ago did that movie come out? Because I've been picking ever since the same have been area. Done right there. One pick. Right. End the story. So, so it got to the point where Anthony walks in two days ago and he goes, Will you just, what do you say exactly? I said, Stop picking that. He just finally had it. <laughs> like other things that we didn't bring to the, uh, you know, to their attention out there in Radio Land. Kenny would bring me Band-Aids every day. I would try everything. He would give me a Band-Aid to cover up You'd the area. You'd scratch through the Band-Aid. I would scratch through the Band-Aid and get back <laughs> at it. I, I, I tried putting, like, uh, glue and stuff around it, so I would at least pick the glue before I get back to the scab. It was just like a complete nightmare. My family is known for being pickers. We all will pick. Yeah. But I thought I was all right with that, except for this dumb thing on my hand, right? So I went to the skin doctor yesterday to get... How's the sore doing in your nose? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, man, I'm having a bad morning, man. <laughs> Just trying to bring a little levity we, to the day. We could talk about my nose picking on another day. <laughs> I'll, I'll go on. I'll throw myself under the bus for that one, no problem. I didn't even realize you guys knew on that we one. We all have our crosses to bear. It's a dry nose. But anyway, because um, now people are going to... No, whatever. <laughs> it's been many years. Um... So I went to the skin doctor to get my skin checked. to do it every year because my mom had skin cancer, blah, blah, blah. And, and stupid Tom Chiasano, you know, got us all paranoid with skin cancer. Yeah. But God bless him because now I'm uh, taking it seriously, That's right? That's good, yeah. So I went to the skin doctor for my regular checkup yesterday, and I finally said, look, I'm picking my hand for well over a year, year and a half at this point. <laughs> and she looks at it. She goes, well, you haven't really done any damage. It's completely healed. What's going on is there's a lot of scar tissue, which is a lot thicker. And you're just digging away at that scar tissue over and over again. Ooh. She goes, I'll solve that. I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. She hands me a stress ball. And she goes, hold on. She pulls out a needle. Oh. Pulls out a needle. That was going to be a meat cleaver and cut your hand <laughs> off. Yes. I wish. I wish. She brought in a psychologist. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so she pulls out a needle and she uh, she starts poking it uh, with steroids. Uh oh. To, I guess that will soft, that'll soften up the tissue so you don't touch it anymore. But after feeling these needles, especially because I got another one on my uh, my pinky that I've been going at your pinky knuckle, pinky knuckle that I've been doing for uh, since uh, November. 
Uh, so there's two of them, really. Is that how you like use uh, tell time? Is that like your calendar? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me look at that. Oh, it has been 11 months. It's a reminder. Yes. <laughs> Fourth of July, I got someone's birthday coming up. <laughs> you you told me that four scars ago. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, getting a needle right into your pinky knuckle yeah. will stop you from touching your hands. I am here to say that today. Yeah, that's got to hurt. She goes, yeah. And then she goes, yeah, there's a lot of nerve endings in that area. I'm like, well, maybe we should have numbed the area before you decided to do this. <laughs> so I, I haven't picked in about uh, 12. It's like AA. Uh, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. But Why? It's, 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 I haven't picked in 12 hours. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, hopefully yeah. uh, do great. the right thing. At least thing. you got to the root cause. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're talking, Colin. <laughs> Oh, you're dude. talking. So your your picking is the equivalent of my guns, <laughs> right? Oh, we got we got problems on the show. I yeah. mean, I'll be the you know we'll of our issues. Thing, but, it's uh, your fingers, your guns, and my genitals. <laughs> just three dysfunctional nothings <laughs> with our little addictions and problems. Yeah, like three I, chimps. Oh, we, we got horrid. we got the OCD in my family there, uh, Colin. Yeah, I have a little bit of that kind of stuff. But, too. but I got uh, I got the easy one. My yeah. mom is uh, suffering bad with the OCD. Her her thing is like uh, horrendous. Without getting into it, if if it means me picking everyone's while, so be it. She's Compared to what yeah. she's dealing with, yeah, we get a little bit of that stuff too. And I, got, <laughs> I, got, I, think, I, I think I must have like ADHD or something. I forget what I have, but somebody no, I, I, <laughs> you they forget. Say, <laughs> they say everyone has a little taste of the OCD. I think you have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> What's ADHD? You know that's not funny because one time I was on a show and they're making fun of Charlton. Oh, that was you. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, hopefully the picking's over. Wait, what is ADHD? Adult? I don't know, but I heard I had it for a doctor. It's like a, a, it's like attention deficit disorder with an H thrown in. Yeah. I don't know what oh, the yeah, H is for. I think that's right. That, that's, amazing. that's the H. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the fact that you were about to confront it. Like, wait, what is it? Like you were going like to? He cares about, just, about your well being. Shh, look it up. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, and uh, fifteen hundred dollars later, by the way. And yeah, but wow. that's also the stress point. She just did not, what she did was killed, you know, that's a real important stress point. She just destroyed your nerves in that area. You well, can never relax again, really. It's all right. I'll just, <laughs> I'm just going to make it into a tattoo or something. And isn't it funny that speaking of his guns and Jim's genitals, it's all that same area he used to pull a trigger and also. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and, and, but then again, you do the, it could be <laughs> anything in life that you use that hand for. That's that's right. Trouble. Here we go. I like the Obi goes, all right, all right. Why? I'm trying to have a little metaphorical moment. Obi, Eating. The hell's the drinking. Today? I got to, like, move on. We got a lot a lot of good material here. <sighs> Fine. I mean, we could. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Because <laughs> we don't really want to know what you think when it comes to our little uh, foibles. Why? Because you'll get us all depressed. We know we got our issues. So we all I, do. I pick. Anthony buys a gun every other day. And <laughs> every other day. I was actually thinking of picking one up today. And, and Jimmy has insomnia. So, you know. I Jimmy has insomnia? I, I was he, has a, he has a new character that uh, the message board is loving. And, and what is it called? Jim uh, the ins they're calling it something like Jim the Insomniac or I, in Insomnia Jimmy Rules. I hadn't slept in two. I was up for almost 48 hours. I just couldn't. I would lay in bed. And just stare. So I would just get up and writing to be productive. And I finally napped yesterday and slept last night. But it was, it was two days without. It. it was awful. It sounds like a good character, though. What does that have to do with the character? He led you in to tell me about Insomnia Jimmy. Well, I have to tell you, I had to set up Insomnia <laughs> Jimmy. Because the character, I was just very silly. I get very silly when I'm overtired. Oh. I, and and, and the reason, like Colin, I'm trying to move on is because we got the original scene from, uh, I'm from a Bronx Tale. I know. I want to see it. All right. I so, hear it. You, do we have to play Vosses again or no? Uh, well, I would love to hear Vosses again. It doesn't really? matter to me. I can hear that a thousand Wait, times. Can we hear the real one first? The real one? Yeah, okay. let's hear the real one. It's a, it's slightly different, obviously, but you'll get the point. Sonny is Johnny. The script was changed. And I think the words are a little different in, in places. The original uh, clip from A Bronx Tale that uh, Voss redid with Chaz a couple months ago. Louie! My grandmother's sick. i got to get out of here. I'll talk to you later. I can't. Where's my money? Dead when I catch you, you piece of thing. Come here. What's the matter? This guy Louie Dumps over here, you know, he owes me $20. It's been two weeks now, and every time he sees me, he keeps dodging me. Yeah. He's becoming a real pain in the ass. I mean, should I crack him on or what? What's the matter with you? What have I been telling you? Sometimes hurting somebody ain't the answer. First of all, is he a good friend of yours? Nah, I don't even like him. <laughs> you don't even like him. There's your answer right there. Look at it this way. It costs you $20 to get rid of him. Right? He's never going to bother you again. 
He's never going to ask you for money again. He's out of your life for twenty dollars. You got off cheap. Forget it. You're always right. You're always right. Yeah, I'm always right. Come on. You worried about Louis dumps? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. The first thing you notice, Chaz, smooth, like, oh, yeah. like when he came in and did that uh, cold a couple months ago. I know it's his, uh, his piece and all, but yeah. like, like he, like it was yesterday. It's just he like, did it like it was yesterday. Yep. He was talking. To right. People talking. Right. Yeah. And now you got the, the Voss version. Louis, beans, I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that right oh. there is the best. Louis, Louis beans. beans. Rewind, man. Louis, beans. He doesn't even, he can't even do a person yelling to another person. No. He can't even do a gambler, which he is. <laughs> and I'm Louis talking Louis, beans. The original is just smooth. Oh, God. no seams. Louis, beans, I want my money. Beans, you can't dodge me forever. Come on, what are you doing about? What are you yelling about, huh? John, I got a problem with this guy over here. Louis Beans. <laughs> this guy owes you 20. I got a problem with this guy over here. Louis Beans. I want to ask Colin Quinn what he thinks. <laughs> I guarantee that Chaz was like talking later to his friends and he's trying to relate. He's like, yeah, they have this guy. I guess he's like the show Jerko. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring him in. I do a scene with him. That was it. Yeah. He's a retard, I think. He's uh, retarded. <laughs> they laugh at him. He's got like helmet head. I <laughs> think it was a Make-A-Wish Foundation thing that they were doing. The charitable. Louie Beans. Oh, Louie Beans. <laughs> Louie Beans. <laughs> Louie Beans. It's like doing a Meisner exercise. <laughs> Louie Beans. Louie Beans. Louie Beans. I got a problem with this guy over here. Louie Beans. <laughs> Louie Beans. 20, and it's been two weeks now, and every time he sees me, he keeps dodging me. Should I crack him one or what? Come on, listen. He wants his Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Sometimes violence is not Shut up. Is, is your good friend the others? <laughs> no, John, I don't even like this guy. Well, there's your answer right there. But, hey, look at it this way. It costs you $20 to get rid of him, right? He's never going to ask you for money again. He's never going to bother you again, right? He's out of your life for $20, so forget about it. Look, you're right, John. <laughs> you're always right. <laughs> Why are you always right? You're right, John. You're okay. always right. That's what he says to Bonnie. You're right, Bonnie. You're always You're always right. right. I should have got to old part of the scene instead of hanging out with these losers. You're right, Bonnie. You're always right. But Except for the time he... you said I do. <laughs> he can't even sigh honestly. <laughs> no. <sighs> but do you hear the mucus build up at the beginning of every line? Before he gets to the spittle, is a mucus bill up. Oh, yeah. Rolling. And then when he's when he gets to John, <laughs> when he says John, that J is just, it sounds like he's saying it underwater. You should have made them face each other so he'd spit in Chaz's <laughs> face during the scene and Chaz would crack him. <laughs> it's like he had to act John. in the middle of gargling. <laughs> uh, Louis, Louis, Louis Beans. Beans? You know Louis Beans? Yeah. Louis Beans. <laughs> Louis Beans, I want my money. The guy's name is Louis Beans. Louis Beans. It's two Louis. guys. <laughs> right. Greg, Hughes, right. Jim, Norton, Martin. come here. <laughs> oh, he's a bad actor. <laughs> you should bring him in to do like all kinds of scenes from that movie. I couldn't agree more. That's from a lot of movies. With different, yeah, but different people. Different guys. We, we got a, any actors out yeah. there want to help us out, like from real movies? Oh, that would be great. He's got the yeah. chops for it. Because this right? is a solid oh, yeah. bit that we got to continue. All right. Love uh, it. Do we have what to? Brilliant bit. Oh, what do you think of um, the Hill? Ah, you don't really care about the Hillary Obama thing, right? It's just rehashing the same crap. <laughs> what the hell kind of intro was that? <laughs> 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 Let's go into Scorch. <laughs> See, that's what I was getting at. I was going to go down that road. And I'm, okay, I'm thinking it's going to be who gives the crap stuff, man. She <laughs> won Pennsylvania. She was supposed to win Pennsylvania. Right. Whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, the brothers are pitching a fit this morning, but that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Dang mm -hmm. it. We lost. They must have miscounted <laughs> or something. Mm -hmm. Well, what's next? What does she have to win next? Anybody know? Indiana. 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 Let me think of the song. Two weeks. Pennsylvania. Indiana. Indiana. Uh, we're going to do it. <laughs> you want to What's hear that from? No. Bernie Shirley? Oh, yeah. oh, well. You, oh, God. Oh, I heard this. Bad Hillary. Hillary. I heard. Oh, you heard it. You yeah. sure? Oh, it's so horrid. I heard it. You sure you heard it? I tell it. you. Oh, but he sometimes put, like, last week, I just, well, if I wake up at, like, 6.30 in the morning, just put on the show for a few minutes, I fall back asleep. Last week, I put on literally one thing 
some dumbass calls and he goes, well, why don't you have Colin push Jerry's car? <laughs> and I hear Anthony explain, oh, yeah, when Colin pushed Jerry's car and Norton, and I wish I could have he goes, ha, ha, with like the meanest little spike. <laughs> I wanted to get up again and come in again. I was so mad. I wanted to come in. I was fuming. Ha, ha. <laughs> we missed the days where you would just come strolling in. Yeah. Because oh. we said something. Next thing you know, the door opens and you, your hair is askew. Or you're pretty I'm much ready. wearing your bathrobe still just to confront whoever's talking bad about you on the show. Yeah, you, live, Colin. you live too close to the, the studio, yeah. I'm thinking. we gotta yeah. get, we got to like move you out somewhere else. Do you hear the listener that had the good little joke about uh, the Pope Mobile breaking down yeah, and you coming out? The, that's that's the line. line? Okay. I was just having a call. <laughs> yeah. But if you can get that nice little Jim's cruel little mean little laugh. Cruel. <laughs> I really wanted to come in and punch him in his face so badly. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what happened. It was early in the morning. I just yeah. oh, let's do the show before I fall back asleep, you know, in a few minutes. Sure. Oh, it made me livid. Uh, why don't we, I was livid. <laughs> why don't we do a little fun, a little fun story before the break? Little, yes. You know the news likes to do this. We're taking our cues from the news today. Here's a fun little story to keep uh, make everyone a little happy today. Well, who says dominoes are just for kids? In Istanbul, they're for adults. More specifically, adults who want to break records. A group of 15 people worked together for nine days to set up this 165,000 domino landscape. It's meant to be Istanbul's. It was part of Turkey's celebration of Children's Day. It was part of Turkey's Turkey celebration of the Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's. Who says Domino's is just for kids? Nobody in the Bronx, from what I remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> Domino's. I love you, the Domino. Hey, Domino's. You know, if you take the bike path, uh, it, it goes along the Hudson River, and you go a bit uh, a bit too far north, Yeah, man, you want to see Domino's going down. And, yeah, and it's happy the, Domino's. And it's not the kids playing, no, it's and they're not. not playing for fun either, man. They're playing for a few dollars. They're, they got some, some bucks on the game. Sure. Yeah. They got their card tables set up all over the, uh, this one park up there, and they're they're dominoing their, oh, yeah. their, they got, their asses uh, off. And they got some of that uh, that uh, rap slash Hispanic music playing. Oh yeah, right, what is it right, called? Right. Riga Riga Rigatoni. 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 Great stuff with a little sauce. And these guys, they set up uh, their car speakers like massive speakers. Sure. One car over here, one car over there, and man, what comes out of those speakers? You I'll got out you. of there and, alive. And, and it's a radio station that's that's broadcasting that here in New York. Mm. But then they always, you know, reggaeton, news. right, or something like that. Yeah, reggaeton. Yeah. Huh? So go ahead. Reggaeton? Whatever, so Domino's isn't just for kids. It was just a little... It is certainly not a... Co it's a contact sport. <laughs> on no landscape. It's meant to be Istanbul's. It was part of Turkey's celebration of Children's Day. This domino display broke the Turkish record. Oof. Oh, well, there you go. That's the most unimportant record I've ever heard. The, the Domino's Turkish. record in Turkey? It's... I am Turkish. It always reminds me of Midnight Express. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Turkey. Daily eyes. Oh, the record Turkish was broken prison. when a fat man's head was cracked against a coat <laughs> hanger. In a coat hook. <laughs> you know what, dude? That scene, dude. <laughs> You're right. Bobby could play that part. Of course he could. Oh, oh yeah. Of course he could. His shape and his sexuality. Or the two little children. <laughs> little fat kids. He's just <laughs> walking down the street <laughs> after he beats some poor bastard's feet. With a cane. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what a cruel guy he was. He got his comeuppance. Sounds like yeah. a real character. <laughs> you ever see in uh, Monsters Ball? And she's telling a story right before her and Billy Bob go at it. She goes, I knew you do this. She goes, Sounds like a real character. <laughs> <laughs> Best. You have a Billy Bob in here? You should have him in voice to a scene. We'd love to. Best sex scene ever, oh, though, yeah. from that movie. Oh, oh be, I Ball. agree. Oh, my God. That was good. She just needs it. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Oh, she just, starts yelling. Oh, filthy right. things, right. doesn't she? After Patrice got run over. <laughs> 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 Better sex uh, scene in, in a uh, in a mainstream movie. We've done this bit many times. Mainstream. That, no, that was an amazing. That life. was an, she probably really... the best sex scene in, in movie regular movie history. And don't say nine and a half weeks. No, that's with the most the, overrated the effing sex scene. Keep the food out of it. I agree. But then. No. I would say, uh, what about dude? What about <laughs> <laughs> what about grumpier old men? <laughs> <laughs> Anne Margaret needs it. Ugh, I think Colin's on, man. Uh, Carol, um, this weekend with uh, Colin Quinn, two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Yes, <laughs> the swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, remember that one? Yeah. What was that? I don't know, but Opie, Opie turned me on to this movie, and he was talking about it for a while. This is a while ago. I don't even know who turned me ago. on to it, but it's a, it's a movie from 2003. Yeah, it's called Swimming Pool. So Opie tells me about this, and I noticed one day it's on cable. So I turned it on, 
And I had to call Opie up during this movie and just go, oh, my God, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. I forgot all about it. The movie it. sucks, but this chick that's in it is, is naked half the time. She is really hot. Basically, the story really goes, hot, yeah. uh, she goes to live with her aunt or an older relative yeah. in, in the middle of nowhere in France or something, and she has a swimming pool. And this uh, older woman, uh, she's like a writer, and she's there trying to write her latest novel. Yeah, get rid of her and, writer's block. And her young, whether it's a niece or whatever, is just a nymph, just effing like all day and all night as this woman's trying to write her novel. And she's she's getting turned on by the noises that are coming from the other room. And she's taking a peek at her while she's sunbathing next to the pool. Look it's at, just it, crazy, it, it, crazy it, stuff. There's man. a scene uh, that Iraq has put up over there. Yeah. Um, but. See, that's the old hag, though. And then the Let's old see. hag gets uh, gets naked by the end of the movie. Ugh. Oh, my God, and it looks like she's got a uh, the black sheep of the family in her lap. <laughs> and she finally gets some action from <laughs> the gardener or something. I don't know. but uh, Put up a still of that I'll girl. I'll tell you what uh, I liked. It was like that, too, that movie with the uh, sirens. You ever see that one with El McPherson and all the naked girls on the... Uh... Look at that. Oh, yeah, she is pretty amazing. <laughs> First Wives Club. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They let those guys have it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't they? Those sassy girls. <laughs> Ladies. I guess they Come show. on. Jimmy, look at that. Where? Really look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> because oh like the girls like all innocent and then and the ladies by the pool just trying to get some work done and all of a sudden she comes over to her all topless just to talk wow. to her about life is and there stuff. Any sex? Like the old school I don't remember. Arm? I haven't seen this. I think it's the undercurrent that's very exciting. This is, this came out <laughs> two thousand three. It got actually really good reviews for like Did one, it? one of those art films. Yeah, look at but this. That's not why people look you at this. Sexy she pool. poked out of the pool at night to take care of a guy who just happens to be oh, sitting on the other oh. guy's sitting on the edge of the pool and she just swims up and, and, and there's that's what kind of made the movie is this old broad just taking a look at all this craziness this young girl's up She's there. just watching this young hose bag. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why we like it, because you don't have to do anything. You can just be like, okay. Look at that, watch Jim. It. You know, it's a sexy movie. You ever see Failure to Launch? It's funny. But it's also <laughs> <laughs> Failure to Launch. <laughs> what was that? Well, it's a movie where Sarah Jessica Parker gets hired by the parents to get her son out of the house because he won't leave. He loves living at home with his friends. <laughs> He's sort of like, in many ways, a glorified child. They have fun. They go like, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. You love awful movies. Collins. I really do. Yeah. Awful. I watch all those horrible. Rumor has it. You ever see that? DePaulo turned me on to that uh, one. How is it? He... <laughs> It's so bad. I can't believe it. Even when Oprah was talking about that breakup movie, that's on the upper end. I've seen that movie. Right. It's on the upper end of those movies. It's not as bad as most of them. <laughs> but even in that movie, they were ridiculous. He's like a tour guide of Chicago. <laughs> I auditioned for that movie. Oh, for what? Not, not the Vince Vaughn part. No. <laughs> that's right. You did. Yeah. We do have to take a break. Colin. Uh, Caroline's this weekend starting Friday, two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. I I highly recommend Call you go now while tickets available. Now that Colin has taken care of his issues, I highly recommend you go see Colin My and Caroline's. Issues care of, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I would plug Chicago, but two sold out shows. Yeah, Why you mention know. it? Oh come on, where are you? Uh, he doesn't need to say. He only says when he needs a little little oh. little help ski. Little May second Pittsburgh. I need some help ski. There Ooh. you go. And it's Pittsburgh. That's what they call it there. Hebelski, those Pollocks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of Colin being here, we got Scorch Audio just for you, my friend. Yay, Scorch, just for you, Scorch. Cause... And you got to explain why you love Scorch so much again, because I love your take on, on the Scorch. But after the break, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony and the great Colin Quinn. Sometimes I wish the fans could hear what we say on the break. That's even crazier. <laughs> we got to tape that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And Jim Norton's here today, too. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Mr. Regular. Chicago. Uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Chicago's here. Don't uh, don't talk to him. It'll end up on his radio show. <laughs> don't let him. Uh, hey, you're... I just always say that the Jim might end up in his book. It is blah. Oh, <laughs> I love when that happens. For anyone listening, whenever I'm hanging out uh, with you somewhere uh, and you say, Hey, I better watch out. This is going to end up on your radio show. It won't. It's not. <laughs> Never it could. wasn't funny or entertaining. Not only that, but you're still keeping secrets about where you go on the weekends, if I remember correctly. From last oh, time. really? Yeah. Do I? It's a little mm -hmm. more open now. 
not that much of an open book. What did you do, go to Erie, PA, and then switch flights? <laughs> Erie, PA. <laughs> Good old Erie. <laughs> what are you, in junior high, you making kissing noises? <laughs> <laughs> College is hysterical, man. Oh, Anthony. Ooh, what are you, am I supposed to go, stop? <laughs> <laughs> Anthony is a friend Colin. of mine. He resembles Frankenstein. Hey, when, when he goes out on a date. <laughs> I was like, fight, fight. Uh, whoa, whoa, wow. whoa. Okay. Uh, whoa. Uh, but we all know Suffice it. Suffice to say, the ending is one turns red and one drops dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, is eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who are we catching by the toe? Well, figure it out. <laughs> I can't believe Hillary said that last night after our victory. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to win, but to gloat like that. Yeah, in that fashion. Well, it's a little racist. <laughs> Fast Freddy from Jamaica Station. Yeah. Uh, Stephen S. Uh, gets credit. The rundowns have been hysterical lately. He's been smashing the hell out of you guys. Uh, good. You can read the rundowns on onda.radio.com. Imagine if, because uh, I have not uh, read the rundowns. They're great. Uh, in, They're in really, probably, really, probably funny. Probably a week, a week and a half. And how funny it would be if he just really was bashing us. Not even in a fun or sarcastic way, but just harshly beating up on us. After all the things we've said about him, I wouldn't blame him. I wouldn't either. Uh, Scorch. Yeah. Scorch. Colin loves this guy, Scorch. Well, Just a little back funny. history really fast. Ant and I, back in the day when we were working in Worcester... We worked at the same radio station as Scorch. Scorch. There, there was something about him. We just yeah. we, we loved the guy from the first day we met him. And he would he would come in with a boom box and he would set up his <laughs> kingdom of nakedness. It was Even like though he, he didn't get like, naked or anything, but it, he he had the illusion that he did naked radio and naked right. radio. He just had this whole, yeah, everything was like radio. It was like a weird like you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he, he just yeah. he just had a way about him, man. He was really, really into his kingdom of nakedness. Totally nude radio. Totally nude. Naked yeah. militia. And then uh, poor Sam started interning with us. Young Sam. Yeah. Really wanted to get into radio. And then we found out that he was uh, going to Syracuse University, right? Syracuse? And I go, wow, we got an old friend that does radio up there. His name's Scorch. So we uh, we basically forced uh, young Sam onto Scorch, that right? That's great. Yeah. Yes. He's and, never been the same, Sam. And then Sam did like his uh, internship up there while he was at school, and then uh, you know a, a gig opened up here, and here's young Sam does, for the show. Does Colin know about Scorch's color of the day? Oh, the new color, color and of number day? of the day. I think I don't. Remember. This was where uh, uh, where uh, Scorch would just give out the color of the day. It'd be like, yeah, all right, uh, the color and the number. Like, all right, today we're looking at uh, brown uh, seventeen. Oh, just but there would be nothing else to it. But it's like a unifying theme for the Scorch listeners. Yeah, yeah, because then well, yeah. they would know, and and he said people would look forward to the next day to see what the color that was. That part I can't believe. But, no, <laughs> who could? And, and you're sitting there waiting for the sarcasm or something, and, oh, and it never none. happens. No. We got the actual bit. It, it's 20 seconds. We got to do this for yeah. Get up, 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 get up. I'm gonna guess blue 43. All right. Today guess. the uh, color is what they say here: working man's brown. Oh. It must be working man's brown. The number is five, so it is working man brown and five. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> what does it even but mean? You, he brings up some good points. Like I was thinking about all these crazy cooking shows. You know, they're just too many cooking shows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sick of them. Do you I know the brothers in Philly have a brilliant thing they do? I saw on the show with color of the day. They'll have a color of the day, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they all guys in the neighborhood all wear the same color shirt and pant, like white shirt and jeans. This way, there's a problem with the cops looking for a young male in a blue shirt and jeans. Oh. And 150 guys. With is blue that real? Shirt. Oh, yeah. I saw it on a police show. And I thought, how brilliant. Very interesting. Is that? So Are the ONA pests listening? Mmm. To all the ONA pests. What's tomorrow's color? That's a pretty good idea. Let's make them uh, like, have to wear a really awful color, like pink. Fuchsia. <laughs> right. Periwinkle. Periwinkle and pink. Periwinkle. All ONA pests have to wear pink. Periwinkle oh, and pink no. tomorrow. <laughs> You're gonna get sued by Scorch. <laughs> right, yeah. You're ripping me off. Hoo hoo. I bet you like there's. <laughs> I bet you there's, there's a lot of people in the Syracuse area playing playing the Scorch numbers now. Yeah, they probably, have, right. like, they, probably betting in, in back yeah. alleys and back rooms and stuff, waiting for uh, the color and the number. Yeah, but now he's gonna say five. He's gonna name a call. Yeah. Number. All right, here we go. So we got brand new Scorch stuff. It's uh, Scorch's top names for Food Network shows. Really? Ooh. Yeah. There are a lot of those shows. I'd love to see some. Well. I think these are the top rejected shows, by the way, if Sam's correct when I was talking to Sam before. Mm. Mm -hmm. Shows that couldn't make it because... Uh, yeah, a little too racy. Yeah. <laughs> reason will be obvious. Here's the, here's the great uh, Scorch. 
we're going to talk about shows that I came up with for the Food Network. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these shows, uh, I don't think they would like to have. Some of them, I think, really have a chance to make it. Uh -oh. Tell me what you think. For instance, uh, the Chef Lollipop show. You know what I mean? The Chef Lollipop making show. And it's called, hmm, that is a great cook sucker. You know? Whoa. That might you not to say that? Wait, wait. That might not. What's, uh, what's a cook? I don't well, a lollipop, you suck on it. Yeah, but a <laughs> cook a sucker... Show. I don't get the it. The cook made the sucker. The cook made it. Yeah, it's like a... But it's... wouldn't that be a cook's sucker? Yes, or a, or a cook... Uh, they'd probably call it a cook's lollipop. Right. No one calls a lollipop yeah, a, a sucker. sucker. Don't be jealous. Usually when the guys wouldn't have the guts to do the interruption. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> What's next? What's next? Show. And it's called, hmm, that is a great cook sucker. <laughs> you know, that might not really have time to make it. That might not no, be the I easiest agree with one him. to get through the sensors. The cook sucker. Nope. One, you know? Don't go there. The cook sucker. <sighs> You're I, right. he, I, he knows I how to. It. He knows how to sell it, though. I like yeah. that one. Huh? I like that one. You like that one? Yeah. How about this? I was going to have a show based on soups, but the soups weren't made from meat. Mm. They were made from you know Vegetarian. the muscles and the tendons and the bones. And the show will be called "I Want to Bone You." Oh. oh. I wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bone you with the bones there's bones in the soup it's not meat but bones <laughs> just <laughs> bones in the soup yeah and and the funniest part of the whole thing is you guys making poor sam go up an intern for him <laughs> yeah <laughs> what a nightmare why is soup involved with boning you why yeah it just be i'll take the meat off and serve bones what where does the, the whole part? thing is horrendous but i want to pick up that me. part yeah yeah how about we start with the concept <laughs> like the expression soup to bones like you know? you've, basically you're saying i accept the concept of the bit but so now we gotta nuts, like but... pick it apart right right but he's right though about uh, about cook sucker like that would never go he is actually yeah. a legitimate point oh well, is that what he's doing proving a point you know what some of the shows i would be surprised if it did go these days <laughs> 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 Stephen S. from Bayshore writes, uh, you guys should have the, uh, hmm, uh, the, uh, Obi's like, this is problematic. Uh-oh. Well, we should have the colored of the day. Oh, I got you. But then he said we should have done that during Black History Month. That's, uh, Stephen S. from Bayshore with that witty line. <laughs> oh, you. Come on, how can you beat I want to bone you, you know? Oh, God. And this one really could have the chance to make it. This one is a barbecue show where the girls are just wearing bikinis and thongs and next to nothing. And the show is called Grills Gone Wild. Come on. That is a winner. Right That's there. a good one. <laughs> Come on. That is a winner right there. This is crazy. Scorch knows what he's got in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Yo, does he? Yes, yeah. exactly. You know a what he big has? steaming pile of Nagel. Oh, I was going to go on radio Nagel. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't when even he look up and laugh. Erock. Erock. Erock's texting. Erock. He hates can we, that. Can we, can, let's ask him on air. I want to yeah. know what this bit's about. He I does like, not like this what, bit at all. What is this bit, Erock? Oh, I didn't hear it. Well, aren't, oh. aren't you part, part paying attention? Aren't the you above yeah. the fray? He's not even paying attention. He didn't want to hear. How do we expect the listeners to pay attention if the guy seven feet to my left isn't paying attention? Iraq, what about that? I don't know. It's not my bit. Ask uh, Sam what that bit's about. Whoa. Sam, oh. comment. You know, it's a throw. It was a throwaway line at the time that I regret because I feel like it's gone wild and hurt people's feelings. Throwaway line that was repeated over and over <laughs> and over. I know they just repeated it after I threw it out there. See, Colin, quickly to bring you up to speed. Uh, around the office now, right. well, it's just for a little fun, off the air. Uh, whenever you refer to crap, you, instead of saying the, the S word, that is, is that, you, uh, you say Nagel, right. which is Erock's last name. I get so it, you though. go, oh my God, I stepped in some Nagel yesterday and I had to scrape it off my shoe. And he hates it. Of course he does. The Nagels have a long and proud history and <laughs> being destroyed in one month here on the show. <laughs> they arrived from eastern Russia during the first, uh, you know, pogroms of the early 20th century. I love that you said a long and proud <laughs> history. So, Iraq, what happens? That bit just bugs you, it gets you a little bit? Not one of my favorite, no. <laughs> Iraq, you got to fight back. Which one's favorite, mayo? <laughs> little, little fighting back. Yeah. Exactly. All right, uh, the scorch continues. Uh, the boys of Simmer. You know what I mean? You want to just make like Oh, others. God! You can't just have the clean... You can't what arbitrarily set up the list and have these <laughs> filthy cook slooker and then have it fill up with the boys of Simmer. <laughs> boys yeah, of the boys of Simmer? It sounds like boys of Summer.
Oh. Uh, actually, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but if he did those first and then he got to the dirty ones later, he can't just throw him randomly. He's so idiot. Why are you trying to fix this bit? It's I just think of it. him brainstorming this and <laughs> no. thinking, let me think. Uh, oh, the simmer. Oh. All right. First, he started with cooking words is yeah. what he started with. Okay, cook, simmer, oh. uh, soup. Uh, that, and then just went through. It's like, okay, yeah, right. simmer, simmer. Summer boys of boys of simmer. Colin, I got one. Colin, when you were getting like uh, great comedians, uh, great comedians for your right. tough crowd, why 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 not scorch? If I thought, I mean, does he do stand up too? We were only using like Kaz doing stand up, but I mean, he could do stand up. He could do it all. He probably used to do stand up. <laughs> oh, that's, that's your official <laughs> reason why you never invited us on the show because we didn't. Uh, do I did invite up. you guys on. I believe many times. Yes, you couldn't come because of the no. Uh, couldn't oh, talk. Really? At this yes. time, I thought that you just didn't what want us crazy? on the show. What you guys on all the time? <laughs> Actually, if you didn't, you have Stalker Patty on. Yes. All right. So chums the, instead of friends. That was the show they did a parody. Chums, of chums, oh, chums. Right. Here's uh, more cooking shows. Uh, Simmer loving. Patty was great. Where is Patty? Simmer loving. Uh, Ask me to dance. Simmer loving. <laughs> Patty's now working for Ron and Fez, so. Ow. She's parlayed. Oh my God. Her success into a, a game. With Ron <laughs> I'm Fez. on multiple shows now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to just make like other sauteed sauces and things like that? The boys of Simmer. Come on. How are you going to beat that? You know, you can't touch it. Uh, here's one, another one. If we're a saute person, how about saute day night fever? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, he didn't say that. But if he at least set it up first with like, hey, how about a show with Brooklyn with dancing? But he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. All the other ones get a big setup. That one he just goes into. Saute it. night fever. Because it's, it's sautéing in the show. Oh, yeah. Hey, you always touch my pasta. <laughs> Stop touching my pasta. <laughs> Gonna sauté. <laughs> Gonna sauté. You happy now, see? Now you're a cannoli. <laughs> this one I feel good. This one I'm cooking down at the restaurant. <laughs> sauté night. <laughs> What, is, what the hell is that? Saute day night. <laughs> oh, saute day. It isn't even like just hey, saute. But can't it's, you play? It's, it's brilliant and it's stupidity. You got to give it, yes. give him that much. But can't you leave that song on and make him do Dice Clay and Scorch yeah. in a scene from Saturday Night Fever? <laughs> that would be a lot of elements there, uh, Colin. Hey, come back over here. <laughs> Stop dancing on the bridge. You're going to hurt yourself. Get over here. Yeah, hey, look, I'm dancing, Tony. Yeah. You didn't call me. You didn't call me, Tony. Hey, look. I'm sorry. I borrowed your car and I said I was going to call you. And I didn't. Anthony's I, I hurt my knee, dude. Anthony's overheating because of you, Colin. Too many elements in the bed. What are you, crazy? He even got conf Anthony never gets confused. He started as, as Travolta and went into Dice. And then he went to Andrew Dice Kelly at the end. <laughs> Hello, Andrew Dice Kelly. <laughs> Andrew Dice Kelly. All right, well, uh, according to Sam, Scorch brings it home in a big way with his final... Final part of the bit here. Yeah, right. he knows how to close it. All right. And the best one of all was one where it he was tells you be, the best one of all. I'm not into seeing men, you know, undressing you or anything like that. All right, of course we know that. A show with some of the best looking men in the world, and it was going to be meant specifically for women, and the show was going to be called, uh, excuse me, your fry is open. See, all these shows. Uh -oh. you know, I actually can't say all of them. Some of them might not make it because of the title. Oh, you know what? Grills Gone Wild? Come on, how can you beat that? A show with scantily clad women barbecuing food? Guys, you have to agree with me. Something like that Do I have would to? definitely be P.F.G. Oh, yeah. His new show that's is called P.F.G. <laughs> that's what it is. It's Scorch P.F.G. P.F.G. Which means uh, the P and the G is pretty good. Great. Great. Sorry, I just remembered. <laughs> Pretty great. And you could, you know, just imagine what the... Oh, the yes. Act. Don't go there. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> PFG. Pretty effing glad we're not doing that type of radio. <laughs> well, well, it's not a, <laughs> not it would be something funny about your gals in bikinis on that uh, sautéing show. <laughs> Grill's gone wild. We should, like, take some of these uh, ideas and <laughs> just run with it. You really, you know what you should do? Actually just set up a grill and studio. A show, yeah. Right. And hey, just... that was my idea. <laughs> what the F? <laughs> he gets a job, though, man. He gets fired every six months, and there's another <laughs> there's another station waiting for him, man. Right? Yeah, just a couple markets below the... I, I can't even keep track of all the stations he's worked for since we uh, moved on. <laughs>
<laughs> and he got gr one of the greatest firings ever. The PD actually told him he was pizza. Yeah. And the PD was looking for hamburger. <laughs> yeah. That just kills me. It's not that, how I think about it. It's not that, like, pizza isn't good. People love pizza, but... Scorch sat us down his last day at the station. Oh, guys, uh, I just got fired. <laughs> and explained the whole story how Dave Dickless sits him down and goes, uh, I'm looking, uh, uh, I'm looking for, uh, a hamburger around here. And you're, uh... You're pizza. You're pizza. Pizza's yeah, a good food. Pizza's good. People love pizza. <laughs> but but we're looking for hamburger. Meanwhile, there's, like, no distinction if you're going to mention, like, a food... Yeah. Pizza and hamburger are in the same category. Yeah, exactly. It's not like... Idiot. Yeah, it's a stupid analogy to make. Yeah. But Dave was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> On so mm. many levels. We're going to play you pizza or hamburger today. Pizza <laughs> or hamburger. Call up. Tell me what you'd rather have. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Go home and watch that movie, The Pool. What's it called? Swimming Pool. <laughs> Swimming Pool. pool. <laughs> Colin, write it down. Let me uh, write this out for you, because you're going to get all confused, and you're going to see some dumb movie that's not... Oh, dumb. that's where you're wrong. Y'all watch The Swim with Burt Lancaster. Remember that movie? <laughs> oh, God. I'm swimming through people's backyards. <laughs> Why? Swimming pool. Why? From swimming that pool? movie stunk. I watched it as a kid, yeah. and I just thought I was too young to get it. Go. And then I watched it when I, I got older and was like, no, it's just a stupid movie. 2002, because I, I think this was a remake. Sw believe it or not, they had to remake this movie, Swimming Pool, from 2002. Uh, 2003. Mm. Starring William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's not the first name that came to mind. <laughs> no, that's the second name that came to mind. <laughs> I think you have Tommy Lee on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. Colin Quinn, it's always a pleasure. You got Caroline's this weekend. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred starting uh, Friday night. Right? Anything else? Jimmy Jackson. Jimmy Jackson. Jimmy oh, Jackson. Uh, see, <laughs> yeah, Colin's longer. obsessed with uh, and. And my, old family member there, my Jimmy childhood. Jackson. Well, he was just a friend of the family. Friend of the family, I should <laughs> yep. say. Jimmy Jackson. Did you love Jimmy his, Jackson stories? Run his rent string. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Jimmy Jackson story was uh, <laughs> him trying to sell the dead horse. The dead horse. <laughs> my actually, my <laughs> favorite was <laughs> him dr riding the drunken uh, drunk in the chariot <laughs> yeah, yeah. down the street, and it, the horse ran between two parked cars, and the chariot couldn't fit. <laughs> The, so it just wiped out two cars. But he, the best was he convinced someone to buy a dead horse. He was able to show that the horse was still alive, even though it was it was, yeah. it was, it was as dead as dead is. Yeah, he said he had to tranquilize it because it was so full of spirit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? Jimmy Jackson rules. All right, remind us. we got to do that Jimmy Jackson story <laughs> on the next Opie and Anthony show. Colin, thank you so much. Thanks, Colin, always a pleasure. Thank Gave you. us a nice little boost of energy today. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I got serious there for a moment. Oh, wow. Oh. Most of you guys can't handle serious. I, I noticed that about you. No. All right. Make a joke. F off. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>